Excellent. <laughs> Hi. I can't say. Okay, that's light and sweet. Can I, are we not? We're live. Yes, can you move that? What's that? Yeah, we're live. Hi, how's it going? My name's Casey. And I'm Emma Pretty. <laughs> uh, we are the creators of Rango. Um, we're here so, to um, promote him in, in aid of saving nature. He's one of 20. We've contacted 20 charities with the hope that each charity can raise a thousand pounds by auctioning or raffling Rango. So, the end result will be £20,000 going to the conservation of orangutans in their habitat. This isn't awkward at all. <laughs> <laughs> so just bear with us, this is the first time we've ever done this. We're having a few technical Not that issues. it looks like that at all. We're fantastic. <laughs> so, let me just get up our questions that Saving Nature have got for us. Bear with me. So Emma is on the keyboard and I'm on the knife. Okay, here we go. So, so our first question is how did we meet? How did we meet? We were building a giant snowman in an extern for an external company based in London. London. <laughs> <laughs> for a London Christmas window display. <laughs> so Casey was sculpting the snowman and I was heading up the team of people who were moulding it and um, recreating it in a hard material. So Casey created it in clay with a guy called Matt, was it with Matt? Matt Lambert, yeah. yeah. Um, and then a team of us came in, moulded it, made a little hat for him, uh, some stick arms, and cast him out. I don't know if he was just one or multiple snowmen. I think he was just one, wasn't he? He just made the one. Anyway, that was the first time we met, and... And then I just harassed her ever <laughs> since. <laughs> what wasn't the first idea? A beagle smoking. Oh yeah, so we, were, we both realised that we were that we had the same um, life, we'd made the same lifestyle choices. So we were both animal lovers, passionate about saving animals, believing in animal rights. Um, and we were trying to come up with concepts for um, sculptures that could pr promote animal rights and try and raise funds to save them. Uh, yeah, and that was the first one, wasn't it? So, yeah. Beagles smoking. Because um, I was a smoker and um, <laughs> they test, yeah, test smoking on beagles and we came up with the idea of a beagle in a smoking jacket and a cigarette, which we thought was far funnier than it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, fortunately we we never got back We've to that. We've been that, that one! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <in Rango. laughs> <laughs> so that's how we met and um, after that, Casey recommended me for another job, um, which was actually sculpting animals again. Yeah, Jose. that's right. Um, and we've been friends ever since, really. So, Casey, what was your favourite animal as a child? As what a child? Is, and what was your favourite animal to sculpt? Well, strangely, you can <laughs> ask that question, I'm a pretty. <laughs> Because when I was a kid, I had my, I had two favourite animals. One was a raccoon called Ricky, and the other was an orangutan. And I used to think that I was a ventriloquist, and they used to travel with me everywhere. Um, but you, am I right in thinking you didn't quite get the ventriloquist part down? I wasn't very good at that <laughs> bit. My, my lips moved um, a lot, but everybody, um, you know was entertained um, and uh, yeah I used to carry him around with me everywhere I think the only reason he ended up getting put down was because I started liking boys and realised that he wasn't he wasn't um, 
making me that appealing to the officer's legs. <laughs> so one of the questions is, what was the origin of Rango? And I guess that relates to, um, he started because orangutans are Casey's favourite animal and when she was a child she carried this orangutan around. Um, <laughs> but they also, but represent, also represent the the problem of global warming, um, the, the Yeah, I guess it, the fact that they're, they're our closest relative in the animal kingdom. Yeah, that are going to be extinct within our lifetime. Yeah. Um, if we don't do something. Yeah. Yeah. And they kind of represent the loss of um, forestry, um, all the animals within them. So the, the orangutan or rango has become the ambassador for that. For that whole ecosystem loss. So we'll speak, just obviously Casey is sculpting in the background, so we should probably speak about what exactly she is doing. When we created this Rango, which you, this Rango here is the one that is up on the raffle for saving nature at the moment. Um, so he was sculpted in clay, whereas this Rango over here that Casey's sculpting at the moment is in the medium of plastiline. So we're... The original clay sculpture was then moulded in silicon with a fibreglass jacket and we're pulling cast from him in a cold cast bronze method um, which is just mixing bronze powders in with the resin um, and then fibreglassing to back him up um, but Casey really wants to make an animatronic rango so we need a new soft Rango, we can't use a hard form of Rango, which is the only thing we can pull from the current mould we have of him. So what we did the other day was we heated up the plastiline, which is this stuff here, it's quite soft. Um, we heated it up until it was a liquid and brushed it into the existing Rango mould, into the negative of him to recreate this positive. Um, in case he's cut into him a bit to reshape him because the animatronic he needs to be more what the character what, what were you saying he needs to be more um, like, the pose this one needs looks to like be... a sculpt doesn't it whereas we want the animatronic we want him to look real and yet he needs to have a different pose this Rango is at a slight anger, angle whereas Ango Rango <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Um, whereas the animatronic one, we want him straight on, we need to add a belly, take away all his hair, which is what Casey is currently doing. Yeah. <laughs> Dig, gouging out his hair and, uh, um, what were you also doing? You're going to add some eyelids? So basically, um, it'll be a silicon, um, this, this will be a silicon skin. Yeah, eventually. And then we'll end up hair punching where the hair is. So we need to get rid of the hair and reduce it back to, um, to just a naked uh, orangutan. Yeah. So we'll melt, we'll, once he's got no hair and in case he's added some eyelids, opened up his mouth, add what you else are you adding a belly? Yeah, he needs a belly. Um, we can probably get rid of most of this hair. We'll remold him and create a negative of him again and then a core and fill that with some really deadened silicon that feels like skin and then he'll get an animatronic put in him and hair punched and um, yeah so that's the next stage of him unfortunately we don't have any footage of the original Rango being the thing sculpted. is we've contacted 20 charities and there's some charities that haven't got the facility to auction or raffle so we've kind of said that we don't want to exclude them from this whole process so we're gonna do something of our own and we're hoping that Rango becomes the ambassador for that um, but um, we don't know what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> um, we're learning things I've downloaded tutorials from Stan Winston's school um, you've got um, we've also got a couple of contacts within film um, that do special effects that are helping us um, just with 
question time and stuff like that. So they're um, advising us as we go. But yeah, we literally don't know what we're doing, really. <laughs> but everything we are doing is completely not for profit. We're not making anything from this. Companies like Not Cuts are supplying materials for us. We've got friends in the industry that are giving us leftover materials. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're not earning anything. So he is completely being given away for free, made for free, and we're just giving our time. Um, because we want our message to be that you should put, that we should be put in panic before profit. Yeah. Um, so we're joining, joining that um, that fight really, um, and this is our way of doing it. Our hobby. <laughs> yeah, our hobby has become Rango. <laughs> yeah. But he's the first of many. So um, we've got a pangolin yep. that we've just sculpted, he's been um, and we've moulded him. Um, I want to do a rhino. Um, that would be for saving nature as well, won't it? That's right. And then um, there's a, an elephant we need to do as well, isn't it? Yes. But that one won't be life size. Thankfully <laughs> not. <laughs> okay, let's look at some of these other questions. Okay, so obviously Rango is in a raffle, um, and there is a link below. I haven't got my big tool in <gasps> the video posted here that you can click on and enter if you want a chance of winning him. It's you can buy ten tickets for ten dollars, and obviously it's going to Fantastic Horse. So one of the questions, Casey, is what place does art have in conservation? Uh, what does it have in? In place of conservation, um, I guess it's another it's another way of connecting with people. Really, yeah. it's another connection. I think sometimes people get switched off by a constant bombarding of um, animals in need and in desperate situations. That there are people that just can't handle the gruesomeness of it. I think as well here, instead of asking people for something for nothing. Yeah, they're actually getting something. They're getting something. One of the ideas for Rango, um, when we were first thinking of, because when we first came into the discussions, we, we you know we had nothing made, and it was you know what could we actually do with our skills as artists that could help in some way, um, and who would want it, and how would we go about it? And one of the ideas was if you had. A sculpt like this putting him in front of a charity box so you know it, you know sometimes you go to airports or zoos or things and they have the charity box and you just give whatever change I feel that if there's something like a sculpt there in front of it you're more drawn to it and maybe more likely hopefully more likely to actually donate um, art draws in people's attention I guess that's yeah the main point isn't it yeah and we just meant like making stuff yeah oh, we, do, we also <laughs> just make, we like making stuff all day every day so do you have any advice for artists out there who want to to also make a difference um just get making yeah my big mm, the the my favorite sentence of all time is build and they will come and i just think if you just build you knew that from space, didn't you? Was it space? <laughs> yeah. I love it. No, was it space? No, it they stole it from something else. It, it was, was um, uh, uh, that that that. Uh, oh, it's like baseball in a field, isn't it? Baseball with a what's it? Oh, forget it. I say it better <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Goddamn. It's about a party. Have it, and they will come. I think that's a bit new age for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, artists that want to make a difference. Don't be greedy. Like if if you want to make a difference, you you you're not going to be making anything from it yourself, except the feeling. Lols. <laughs> a lot yeah. of lols. No sleep. <laughs> um, and it's experience, isn't yeah. it? Just it's... get started. I mean, we've learned a lot. We've messed up a lot, haven't we? You <laughs> <We've>... have. <laughs> Another go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, yeah. I have a, I've left my other tool in the garage. Oh my god! I've got video footage of you trying to help mold. <laughs> you better destroy it. Not happy. Um, yeah, just just get started. Just I don't know. As soon as you have an idea, just start doing it, and even if it goes wrong, you'll get there in the end. Yeah, it's all a learning curve, isn't it? Yeah, it's my favourite saying. And oh, it's, it's not like you know, it's not like you're just you're doing nothing. You're doing something. Yeah. Right, I've lost the question again. Here they are. Right, you got a rabbit by your foot. Here we go. So how how do you think? Covid is going to affect your line of work for future projects. I mean, for these future projects, brilliantly, because we've got all the time <laughs> in the world to do them. Um, <laughs> for, for actual for income, the income work. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think people. Uh, there's always a need for. Um, entertainment there's always a need yeah i think the film industry will will bounce back it's a, it's starting to thrive again now isn't it um, yeah so i i'm back now um and it's very different uh they're managing very well they're very strict yeah uh, we've had no actual cases it's been brilliant we've been back a month um and now the rest of I mean, you're getting tested three times a week. Yeah, we're you? getting tested very regularly. We're getting temperature checked. Um, people doing shift work. Um, we've got containers outside, so there's a limit to how many people can be in each workshop. And everyone's just being really sensible. We have to follow America's rules, so it's constantly wearing a mask. Um, obviously, they're the only changes, really, I think. Other than that, we'll go hopefully back to normal and the industry will be back up and running again. Yeah. Um, but it's hard to say at the moment. Um, but as for projects like this, yeah, it's given us a lot more time to work on them. And it's probably kick-started Rango, hasn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. Um, having all this time to actually get our teeth in and work on them. I mean, Rango, really, I mean, he, he was started... Um, last year the sculpture of him was started but he'd been sat in my front room for months hadn't he yeah and then um we did get to mold him before when the weather got good yeah lockdown yeah um but then as soon as lockdown happened i was just able to crack on and get one out well you'd got one out of the mold and i was able to, yeah. to finish it wasn't i yeah yeah and then we got another another three out haven't we now so <laughs> Oh, there's monkey. Monkey's a rabbit. <laughs> there's two two rabbits down here. Um, so what piece of work are you most proud of? I'm not sure if that means in work work or in outside of work work. So maybe hmm. which inside work are you proud of? I'm proud of what we're doing. This is... So Rango. Yeah. Yeah. I love what we're doing. Yes. This, yeah, it speaks volumes, really. But um, in work, uh, ah, there's just so much. Um, I created a, sculpted a, a dog for Beauty and the Beast. Um, oh, God. Uh, Luke Skywalker's house, what was it? It was a moisture farm, wasn't moisture it? Moisture farm, yeah. That was oh. pretty good. What what job Star Wars on. film was that? That was episode nine. Episode nine. Um, we also uh, did a giant, um, a giant, a giant's head on that as well. That was quite a, uh, a good project. But I think, yeah, definitely what we're doing now is, yeah, outranks any of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, So, so um, Andy said, can we talk more about the the process of um, 
the moulding and where it was cast. So when we've done all our work with Rango, it's been at Casey's house. She's got, we're not set up in there today, but we've got a workshop in the garden. Um, we're in the living room today because the internet connection wasn't great, but we do everything. And I've not got all my tools. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Casey's just moved house, so we, we're, um, we're re-kitting it out, but we do everything in, in the workshop at Casey's house. Um, got most of the basic machinery and equipment, which is really great. Um, and when we first did Rango, we were we were actually it was really sunny. We were doing it on your patio, weren't we? Yeah. Um, so Casey had sculpted Rango a couple of months previous. We were both quite heavily into work, and she'd been nagging me to come round and have a look and see what could be done. And um, eventually, I came round, and yeah, we just got to it. So. He needed a bit of touching up, didn't he? He had dried out a little bit, so we reworked the clay. So yeah, talk about how you... I think you're running low on battery. I know. <laughs> how many... Let's have a little look. I can't say that. Did it say, did it say a time frame? Um, I didn't. I couldn't see that far away. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I might go and get something. Yeah, so to start with... He looked like this, but in clay. So we covered him in silicon. So just a runny layer of silicon. Um, let that go off and then cover him in another runny layer of silicon. So when we did this, we have him upside down because all of his detail is in the hair. Um, and that's where you might catch bubbles. So spin him around, pour the silicon on and then get an airline or a leaf blower and really get the silicon into all the detail um, so that you're, you're, you're not getting any <laughs> so I think there will be running layer so once we've got all the deep captured all the detail in the running layers of silicon we mix up a thicker layer with a product called Fixotropic Massage that into all the detail again until you've got a thickness that you're happy with, um, which is normally about 10 mil. And then you add in locators, which will locate the silicon jacket into the next stage, which is the fiberglass that is a shell around the silicon. So Rango was a one piece silicon that pulled off like a sock and a four piece fiberglass jacket. Unfortunately, the mold isn't here with us tonight. Um, as soon as we had demolded him, we pulled a hero of Rango, just a plain white Rango, so that if in the future we need to remake Rango, we've got that master there that we can remold. So at the moment, the silicon we've used with something this detailed we should be able to get about 20 pulls from that mold which is why Casey came up with the idea that is 20 rangos 20 charities um 20,000 pounds so if you'd like to help us get towards that goal there's a link in the description below and it's 10 raffle tickets for 10 dollars um yeah, so we've got a hero of him if we would one day like to do more. But at the moment, we're just focusing on the ones from the mold we currently got and the animatronic and our pangolin and hopefully the rhino. So that's just kind of where we're at, at the moment. So someone's asked, uh, did we get to hang out on the set of Star Wars? So I actually remember. So. I think we were on it just under a year. Oh, so, I was a year, yeah. Yeah, year, episode yeah. nine. And um, we saw, we worked in workshops opposite each other just across the road. And uh, I wouldn't see each other frequently. And I remember shouting across the road one day, oh, we should really get that coffee. But I think in the whole, the whole time we were there, it, I mean, it was very busy. 
busy film. <laughs> we didn't we didn't meet up for that coffee not once, but we'd just shout at each other across the road hello a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that is all the questions. So thank you for everyone who's already donated and supported for Rango or just saving nature in general. Um, I think that will probably wrap us up for today. Yeah. Um, how far have you got with Rango? Not very far. Not very far. <laughs> so as you can see, it takes it's quite a long, a long process. Um, what have you done so far? Just trying to remove the hair, um, reshape his face, um, uh, and once I've got the form of him, then I would start putting in detail. There's a lot of patch ups to be doing. To, to do on him as well um which we which would have which i would have done first but this is quite a um in order for this preview we've just kind of left that for a minute and i'll come back to it um but yeah he's 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 getting there the form will come once i've got the form just add in the detail and then and then mold yeah so once we've finished the animatronic and the pangolin will be in contact with Saving Nature and hopefully they'll join in our efforts again to help promote our new characters. Maybe we'll get a technician. <laughs> yeah, we'll get a technician to help us with the camera work. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you everyone for watching and for donating <laughs> and thanks for your time. And um, if there's any other questions, we'll reply in the comments. Perfect. Thank you. Cheers. Ciao. Bye.